All right, so this is just basically like lore to uh, The Wrong Green Thumb, Chapter 3. Um, so basically, there was this New York Ta Times article that said, in large type, the Reich adopts swastika as the nation's official flag, Hitler's reply to insult. And so, um, it's kind of funny though, because in tiny print, assuming not to offend uh, Hitler and the, the Nazi party, because New Deal America in the 1930s with the Roosevelt administration was pretty connected. Well, I mean, they weren't at, they weren't necessarily allies, but they weren't at odds with each other yet, like they were in World War II. Cause, uh, so that's an interesting background for um, at why everybody was so on edge. Like, America had to, like, sort of catered to uh, this. So, uh, in tiny print, <laughs> so they, again, so, um, for, so it was out there, and not to offend, it, quote, anti-Jewish laws passed, non-Aryans deprived of citizenship and right to intermarry. Uh, whether or not this was uh, in fine print, it's debatable, like, Still, there was, um, you know, since uh, people were allowed to become citizens within America, even if you were discriminated against, this was sort of something the Nazis didn't like about America. Hold on. Um, but anyways, there was this uh, SS Blemen in New York that... Uh, was waving around its Nazi flag and yada yada, and protesters, well, I guess historically it's rioters, but I think it's good enough to say um, protesters, because I think even if they're destroying a whole bunch of shit for a good cause, like, I know that's riot, but honestly, they knew what some shit was up, so they went on the, the cruise liner, took the Nazi flag, and threw it into the Hudson River. <laughs> And I guess that's what the insult was that Hitler was talking about with his reply. Um, so, uh, yeah, the uh, rioters were obviously arrested, but there was this good dude named Louis B. Brodsky, and I know it's weird to bring it up, but historically it was it, it is still relevant. I think Jewish lawyer and court judge wanted the protesters out of jail, and just to Despite the dynamic between the Nazis and America, he stir up the hierarchy by, um, you know, when he was arrested, he, before he was arrested, I believe, uh, he wrote, or no, this was when he was arrested, actually, he wrote, the black flag of, the swastika is a black flag of piracy. And it stood for everything the United States opposed. To fly it was a gratuitously uh, blazing flaunting of an emblem which symbolizes all that is antithetical to American ideals of the God-given and unalienable rights of all peoples to live, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. Nazism re represents a revolt against civilization in a brief, if I may borrow a biological concept as atavistic throwback to pre-medieval, if not barbaric, social and political conditions. So, hold on. So, I think that um, it was interesting, just to spite the dynamic, in 1931 he stirred up a scandal by... Uh, distributing pornographic novels and so and he uh, hired people to uh, have nudity at this uh, club like two new dancers at this Greenwich Village Club and so with this trail of democracy the Nazis and the America at the time couldn't handle it because you know they were trying to save face and so um I think this is like a, a little hypocrisy sometimes because, like, you can imagine if OnlyFans existed back then, they would want it banned.
but um only if women had control over it though they would much rather it be like something that is like more coercive and the woman doesn't really get much out of it when it comes to like uh the power of like the dynamic of uh like democracy sort of hinges on women having a say and uh during the Weimar Republic there was a lot of uh, LGBT stuff going on, actually, and so, um, but there was that, like, homophobic gay dudes who the Nazis could sort of uh, take advantage of and use their hate against feminism to join their ranks. Um, yeah, but, um, Brodsky, oh, I forgot to mention, there was two flags at the time. Um, but, um, yeah, conservatives, G Germans joined the, uh, the Nazi party, and as much as they hated the two flags thing, one flag meant a mighty resistance, a, re a mighty renaissance of the German nation, and another flag meant the glorious past of the German Reich. And so, um... Honestly, they didn't like that there was multiple flags being used to bolster the Nazi cause, but they allowed it, you know, just to gather respect and power so that their name would be more recognized. Because obviously, like, you don't want to be going around being like, this disgusts me immediately and lose all your fan base or something like that. But, um, yeah, when Brodsky said um, that Nazism was against American values, this really seemed to, um, this was like a, um, this was like a bait to them or something. Like, he trolled them, and unfortunately, the Nuremberg Laws proved them, uh, proved them right a little bit, just based on their own research. Uh, hold on. Yeah, so there's some weird Nazi lore about their obsession with World War I America. Uh, I think I might as well read this shit, actually. Um, Alright, so as a result, it can be, in fact, a thoroughly jarring experience to read German accounts of America from these years. Consider, for example, Albrecht Wirth. Wirth, in his 1934 Volk World History, a global history for Nazi readers, which just sounds kind of funny, but obviously it's not, um, with a stock portrait of Hitler as its in, uh, frontierpiece, describing America for his German readers in these terms in his opening pages, the most important event in history of the states in the second millennium up until the First World War was the founding of the United States of America. The struggle for the Aryans for world domination received thereby its strongest prop. That's weird enough, um, obviously. Um, all right. Modern Americans sometimes have ugly things to say about the founding, obviously. Um, we all understand, as Thurgood Marshall ruefully said, that the American Constitution was defective from the start requiring several amendments, a civil war, a monumentous social information to attain, its respect for the individual freedom and human rights that we hold as fundamental today. This is honestly true, and this is sort of why um, the Nazis and America sort of split up uh, ideologically a little bit. But um, it didn't really stop them, unfortunately, from praising America. Like, obviously, we have this history that they just dug up and did research on, so... Alright, so... Hold on. Another car is passing. I wanted to do this outside. Remember, you know, my seasonal thing going on. Nor was worth alone. He was reciting a standard tenet of Nazi world history. In the world... In the early 1930s, According to Worth, Worth Drescher, for example, author of the 
handsomely, author of the handsomely printed 1936 tome titled The Supremacy of the White Race, the founding was the first fateful turning point in the worldwide rise of white supremacy. America had assumed, quote, the leadership of the white people after World War I, fulfilling the promise of centuries of American racism. Oof. And if it were not for the contributions of the Americans, quote, a conscious unity of the white race would never have emerged. And so, with that obsession, they sort of use um, their Jewish issue that they had, you know, even though they live there, like that was their damn home. Um, Nazi literature, like in the article Race Questions Arise, where they basically went over the 46 states and yeah, where it was like illegal or black people were sort of like doing specific tasks in the caste system. Um, like their interest in at least the modeling of specific jobs, like the shoeshine boys in America, who they have to point out are exclusively Negroes. Um, geez. And uh, they have to point out um, that um, in these 48 states, there was um, skin whitening cream just to fit in with the general society so they could see you respectfully, um, at least at the time, obviously. Um, yeah. And I guess in this article, that they were doing research on, it, quote, young Negro boys in Harlem. The Negroes are multiplying significantly more strongly than the white population of the United States. Um, now, this is a really irrelevant, but in the birth dearth, which is really weird that I'm bringing that up amongst this, um, their maximum TFI that they preferred was like seven children. So we like to judge minorities, of course, that they're overpopulating and oh my god, but like at the same time, if it were white people just being the ones to have like a billion kids at once, we would be, oh my god, we'd be frothing from the mouth back then. And it seems like people still, you know, have that preference. So, um, oh, right, and food stamps were apparently initially for um, white women, I believe. Um, at least that's what I've heard. Um, so, of course, once it became, like, something that was frowned upon, once uh, black people were using it, so we scapegoat them as the reason why food stamps exist, I assume. Anyways, figure six in this article says, Mixed marriages between white and black women are forbidden in most states of the Union. The former Negro boxer and world champion Jack Johnson cannot return to America because he married a white woman in Paris. Oof, jeez. Um, anyway, there was this Nazi judge named, I think he's a judge, god damn it, he might not be, but he was definitely a higher up Nazi in the infighting when they were deciding the Nuremberg laws. Um, Bernard Lozener, hold on, I gotta get to what I was going. Um, so, Lozener and their infighting about how to determine how to identify a Jew based on their uh, the African American question based in America, it was a lot more challenging because they couldn't just go by phenotype. Um, and so, um, yeah, this sort of freaked out the Nazis, and so uh, this Nazi judge, uh, Roland Freisler, and while going through the research in the infighting, of course, pointed out America didn't actually need a scientific objective for racism. And I think this is the most, it's very good to realize that our worst enemy got this shit from us, honestly. And so, 
when it's more masked off for these people to be like actually racist, they will use words like racism and be like, well, we don't need a fucking actual reason. All right. Moreover, I am reading what he read. Um, moreover, it is not the case that all states that have to reckon with the possibility of Japanese immigration have spoken of it. Have spoken of the Japanese. But some have spoken of mongrels, even though it is without a doubt the Japanese that it is without a doubt the case that Japanese and Chinese are not to be assigned to the mongrels, but to an entirely different Volk blood group. Um, yeah, even though they use blood laws, um, there were still some Nazis that were against the one drop rule. I guess it was just too harsh for them or whatever. Why have these states done this? I cannot believe that they have done it just in order to delineate a concept, rather a belief that they have done it, because they were targeting a kind of race image, rattle build, and have only erroneously lumped the Japanese in with the Mongols. The same thing is shown by the way they list them, i.e. the various races altogether. A state speaks of Mongols, Negroes, or Mulattoes. That clearly shows that the racial point of view has been placed in the foreground. The bottom line is that uh, the Americans in reality have first and foremost desire to have race legislation, even if today they would perhaps like to pretend it not so. Um, now this plays into um, chapter two, to the, con the uh, yeah, of what I was writing, where um, these people, even though um, they could uh, try and manipulate the jury's principle of race by saying, well, I'm white, and I'm a high caste, this, that, and the other thing, and, but, like, considering their other um, things they nitpicked about race, not just their skin color, the jury in America could pretend, and judges in America could pretend not to be racist, as I was mentioning in Chapter 2, which I actually think it's a good crossover. Um, it's fucked up, but, yeah. All right, so, I think the most important thing to go with is that um, people who discriminate at the end of the day really don't need a reason to. They just got need to go by some weird gut feeling they have. Um, all right, see ya.